Hi, welcome to Simply Nash Media. Today we're going to take a look at the thickest N12000 Pro. Uh, it's a 12 bay rack mount Nash meant for large scale enterprise and mid scale enterprise customers. Um, basically it's a 12 bay rack mount Nash to you, um, fits in any type of rack. It can go with square holes or peg holes, the rails do come with the Nash. Um, taking a look at the front of the Nash, slight different layout to what you're used to on a thickest rack mount. Um, generally the thickest rack mounts just have a nice shield at the front with the hard drive trays hidden behind it. Here you've actually got your LCD and everything on the front, so you never need to open this enclosure. We won't open the enclosure for you because it doesn't actually open on the flat surface, you have to have it slightly off the edge. For the sake of the video we won't open it, but if you do open it, behind there are your hard drive bays. They can be locked again as well, so you can lock those and then of course secure your front. Um, the main reason for this is once you've actually populated your NAS, generally 12 bay rack mount customers have fully populated configuration build when they purchase. So for that pure reason, your hard drive base get locked, you close this up, you never need to open this again unless you have a hard drive failure. Um, knock on wood, that never happens to you. Um, that being said, all your LCD is at the front, your power buttons at the front, your actual LCD targets are at the front. You can actually scroll through this LCD um, using the buttons located next to it to actually see more information. You can change the IP address of the NAS, you can change your password on the NAS, um, the LCD itself actually is password protected. Um, by default, it's 0000, so four zeros to get in. We do recommend changing that password. That also means nobody can just randomly go into the LCD and change network settings, etc. Um, that's useful because we don't want your network settings to change once they're set up, it'll break all your map drives. Um, but generally, that means if you, when you first buy this NAS, if you can't see it on the network, it means you need to go to the LCD and change the IP addresses. The thickest is by default come on a static IP, not DHCP. Main reason being for this is thickest just, they don't see the point of DHCP. Uh, they forwarded you the functionality of DHCP, but we don't even see the point of DHCP when it comes to putting a server in your environment. Um, static IP is the only way to go. Set it up on an IP address, it's never going to change that way. If it reboots that IP address, it's only reserved for this. Go into your network and reserve that IP address and so nothing else can pick it up on DHCP and leave it to this. Uh, main reason, you don't have any IP conflicts going forward if you reset the NAS. That can be a major issue in a large scale enterprise because IP for, or conflicts are just difficult to resolve because you have to go and find which machine's got the IP address conflict and actually change the IP address on that. Uh, so because of that, we'll recommend you always set up on a static IP. Um, that being said, we've taken a look at the front because it's very general. We'll swing you around to the back and take a look um, and then we'll speak some more about the features of the unit. Okay, taking a look at the back of the NAS. This is what you're generally used to on a thickest NAS. You've got your power supplies there, um, removable of course, so if something does fail, you can pull out the power supply as opposed to sending the whole NAS back. You've got your RJ45s there, your HDMI port there. Um, you've also got your USB ports here, USB 3 yes, as expansion slots. Those are USB 2 down there. Um, I think it's also give you expansion units. You've got your eSATA after the port, and again, we don't generally use eSATA much anymore. If you do use it, it's mainly for external hard drives to back up to and back up from the NAS. You've got your expansion slots, 10 gig cards, RJ45s, what have you, you can expand in terms of that. The expansion units for the, the thickest don't need a SAS card like QNAP NASes, for instance. Um, they plug in via either the eSATA, so again there's a reason for the functionality there, or via USB 3. Um, so generally reserve those if you plan on using an expansion unit. Um, the expansion slot, sorry, I did mention 10 gig and RJ45, you can also expand more USB 2.0s if you'd like as well. Um, so that is another option too. Um, Thickers do sell their own 10 gig cards, the C10 GTR is a Thickers 10 gig card. They also sell their own USB 3.0 expansion card as well. So from that, you don't have to worry about compatibility around the block as well. Thickers do sell them. They're quite expensive coming from Thickers. They're generally around the market price. Um, aside from that, that's really the back of the unit. Um, the HDMI functionality before I go away is um, basically so you can connect a monitor up to the NAS um, and monitor the NAS that way. It doesn't really do anything else. There's no sort of media playback or anything functionality like that. It's purely for console view. Um, we'll bring you around back to the front and talk a bit more about the features of the NAS. Okay, bringing you back around to the front of the NAS. Um, we spoke about the hardware of the NAS, let's talk a bit more about the features. Um, iSCSI connectivity is a big plus on this unit, connect directly up to a server, um, that way you have local access to the NAS as opposed to needing to work it over the network. Uh, VMware, Citrix, Zen server, all compatible, you can do your VM backups directly to the thickest box. 
Um, you can use this as a backload for your data storage on your server, that way you don't have to fill up your server with data. Um, remember, all of this can be accessible either over the network if you've, uh, functioned, if you've utilized iSCSI. The only way to utilize iSCSI is RJ45 directly to a server. You will need an iSCSI initiator on your server. Um, aside from that, I mean, you get local access to the NAS, uh, which is great on the server aspect because you're not transferring over the network. You can run your backups during the day without affecting general business practice. Um, aside from that, HA is another option here, high availability. Um, you can have two of these boxes identical, identical hardware, identical software. Um, your hard drive size has to stay the same. Your NAS configuration, your NAS settings will have to stay the same. The only things that can change are your IP addresses. Um, once you've done that, you connect this up via HA, HA get the start heartbeat going. Um, once the heartbeat's there, it'll replicate. If something does fail, it'll fail over quite easily by itself. That being said, HA is always being finicky on its thickest. Um, the heartbeat doesn't always necessarily stay alive. Um, it dies during passive network connectivity. So because of that, we recommend R-Sync as opposed to HA. Um, R-Sync will allow you to buy a different type of box. Um, but of course, make sure you've got your data available. Um, so if you've got 64 terabytes of data to back up, make sure your second box has 64 terabytes of data. Um, you'll back up using the rsync functionality and replication. The only difference will be when you go to failover, you'll have to change the IP address of the failover machine manually. Um, back up your configuration and settings from the thickest and just upload it to that, it's easier. Um, aside from that though, iSCSI connectivity, IPv4, IPv6 support is here as well if you do use that infrastructure. Um, there are a few businesses that will run off that infrastructure now. Um, IPv6, of course, if you don't know the difference, just allows you to have more IP sets available. So if you're a big large scale enterprise, IPv6 is generally a good option to have if you've run out of enough IP slots on IPv4. Um, aside from that, this is really what you get from the, the thickest box. I mean, it's it's not the easiest to use NAS, but once you do learn how to use it, it's probably the more versatile out of all the NAS brands out there at the moment. They allow you to have SSH access, so you can console into the NAS remotely. And it's more better for Linux houses um, and Linux support devs. Um, basically, if you've got your own in-house IT infrastructure, this is a great box for you. Um, it allows you to have a bit more flexibility and do what you want. Um, remember, it does run a Linux OS, so you can't run a Windows OS on here. Um, but it does work absolutely fine with any Windows server. Um, aside from that, thank you for watching our video today on the N N12000 Pro. Remember, you do get this variant on the N16000 Pro. Everything that we've said today in this video applies to the N16000 Pro, albeit with a slight processor upgrade, but I think it's only by 0.2 gigahertz. Um, really, the N16000 Pro, if you just need more data, that's the other option for you to go for. Uh, thank you for watching us our video today. Subscribe to our channel, of course. If we post more videos, you get notified. Do like our video if you liked our content. Um, you can contact us at sales at simplynash.com. Email us at 407-960-4690 if you have any other questions. Or if you'd like a specific video made, please do leave us suggestions by leaving us a comment on this video. We are always happy to read suggestions and take them on board and see what we can do for you guys. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.